स्टूडेंट्स आर पार्थसारथी ऑल्सो नोन एज राजगोपाल पार्थसारथी इज एन इंडियन बायलिंगुअल पोइट ट्रांसलेटर क्रिटिक एंड एडिटर ही इज अ फेमस साउथ इंडियन पोइट बोर्न इन तमिलनाडु ही वाज अ लेक्चरर इन इंग्लिश लिटरेचर इन बॉम्बे फॉर अ डिकेट देन इन 1971 he joined Oxford University Press as a regional editor in Madras. He is an associate professor at Skidmore College, New York, USA. He edited 10 20th century Indian poets. This collection, 1976. His rough passage published in 1977 is a well-known poem. He was awarded the Alka Poetry Prize of Poetry India in 1966. His translation into modern English words of the 5th century Tamil epic, The Tale of the Anklet, an epic of South India, was published by Columbia UP in 1993. It received the Saitya Academy Translation Prize in 1995 and the Association for Asian Studies Incorporated A.K. Ramanujan Book Prize for Translation in 1996. Now, introduction to the poem. Dear students, his rough passage is a long poem divided into three parts entitled Exile trial and homecoming. Exile opposes the culture of India to the Europe and examines the consequences of British rule on an Indian and especially an Indian's loss, his identity and therefore his need to go back to his roots. Trial celebrates love as a reality here and now. Homecoming, the third and final part, explores the phenomenon of returning of one's home. In this way, this poem, Rough Passage, is divided into three parts. This poem from Homecoming has been taken from the twelfth section of Homecoming, which is a part of his long poem, Rough Passage. So, dear students, this poem is not a separate poem, but a section of his long poem that is entitled Homecoming. And that Homecoming is a part of his magnum opus, a lengthy poem, Rough Passage. In this poem, the poet talks about a teacher critic who failed as a poet and so chose a job of a critic, but he failed in criticism too. The poet condemns the teacher critic because he is incapable of writing even one or two lines of poetry, but always keeps evaluating the works of learned poets. And structurally this poem is written in free verse. It has no rhyme scheme. Now come on to the poem from Homecoming. The poet writes in three three lines stanzas. What does he write? I see him now sitting at his desk. The door is open. It is evening. On the lawns the children play. The poet says that he sees the teacher critic now at this time sitting at his desk. He is sitting at his desk of work. That is he is doing some work. The door is open in the evening. It is evening time and on the lawns the children play. And the children are playing on the lawns outside. Such as is the setting seen in the very first stanza of the poem. 
What is the scene? The teacher critic is sitting at his desk doing some work and the door is open. It is evening time and outside the children are playing on the lawns. Next, he went for the wrong gods from the start and Mary's made it worse. He hadn't read his Greek poets well. The poet says that the teacher critic went to the wrong gods from the start and marriage worsened his position all the more. He had not read the Greek poets who would have elevated his thoughts and would have taught him the futility of marriage. He says he went for the wrong gods from the start. That is the teacher critic was misguided in the beginning. He had no right guidance to deal with his life and marriage made it worse. And he was misguided, his condition was worsened by marriage itself. That is, he had no chance of proper guidance from anywhere. And he hadn't read his Greek poets so well. He had no guidance from classical poets also. In this way, he was misguided thoroughly from the beginning. Next, better to bury a woman than marry her, now he teaches. Review words written by others is invited to conferences. Better to bury a woman than marry her. His marriage has worsened his full, complete ideology. And so, he is so much irritated by his marriage that he says better to bury a woman than marry her. This is his principle of life. Such as a misguided critic he is. And he reviews verse written by others. He reviews the verse, the poetry written by others. He shows himself as a learned reviewer. A teacher critic reviews the works of learned poets and is invited to conferences, meetings and he goes there and attends them to show his learning. But in reality, he has no learning. He has no knowledge. He is totally misguided fellow. How long it had taken him to learn, he had no talent at all. All the words came easy. It took him a long time to understand that he had no knowledge. Although he could join some words only, such as a person he was. In this way, the poet says he gets invitations to attend conferences and he makes it a point to attend them. It was long after that he learned that he had no talent, but words came to him easily and effortlessly. Next, one can be articulate about nothing or was it simply his God had left him? This teacher critic could not express his ideas clearly. How such as a fellow he was, perhaps his God had left him so. Paddling his bicycle glasses, he asks, what's it like to be a poet? Paddling his bicycle glasses, he rides his bicycle and having glasses, he asks, what's it like to be a poet? That is, there is nothing in writing poetry. It is a very simple task, such as it is ideology. And in reality, he cannot join one or two words. 
एज अ पॉइट एट दिस द पॉइट आर पार्थ सारथी बिकम्स एंग्री एंड ही कॉल्स दैट टीचर क्रिटिक वॉट आई सी टू माई सेल्फ द सन ऑफ अ बिच द पॉइट इन फ्यूरी इन एंगर इन रैथ कॉल्स हिम द सन ऑफ अ बिच फैटन्स हिमसेल्फ ऑन द फ्लैश ऑफ डेड पॉइट्स ही इज सच एज अ सन ऑफ बिच दैट ही फैटन्स हिमसेल्फ ऑन द फ्लैश ऑन द वर्कस ऑफ डेड पॉइट्स दैट इज ही कलेक्ट्स इंफॉर्मेशन from dead poets works and edits them and prepares and shows that as written by himself and in this way lines his pocket with their blood in this way he fills his pocket with the sweat and toil of the works of dead poets that is he collects information from the works of dead poets and makes his own by editing and in this way he collects money such as a son of a bitch that teacher critic is the poet says from his finger tips oozes ink and paper and in this way from his finger tips that is by his hand oozes drip ink and the paper that is he writes in this way by collecting the knowledge from dead poets works as he squats on the dung heap of old texts and obscure commentaries and he squats he sits on the dung heap of the old texts that is he collects information from secondary level works not from the works of learned poets so the poet calls the works as a dung heap of old texts and obscure hidden commentaries that is he finds out some commentaries from some hidden corner and then collects them to make new and his own and in this way the poet says that he squared sits on the dung heap of old texts and obscure commentaries and in doing this work of collection his eyes peel off that is he becomes tired by this editing work also in this way the poet criticizes such as a teacher critics or reviewers who can not write even a single line of poetry but sits to criticize the works written by learned poets where could his eminence be but for the poets who splashed about in the hellas pond or burnt in the java sea parth sarthi sarcastically calls him his eminence and wonders where he would be without the poets of the classical and modern world he supported himself by writing criticism on the poetry of classical and modern poets really he has nothing of his own but he has supported himself by writing criticism on the poetry of classical and modern poets such as this critic is in this way the poet criticizes these reviewers who has knowledge and sit to criticize the works of learned writers dear students this poem is written in free verse hence there is no rhyme scheme in it so dear students i think you have understood this poem so thank you thank you very much